Good morning, folks. I wanted to take a few minutes and uh, talk about baptism. You know, we have many folks in our church that need baptized, and uh, I wanted to take this video and um, tackle a few things, uh, a, a few questions that people have commonly about baptism. Uh, what is baptism? What does it do for the Christian? Uh, why do we baptize the way that we do? And then who is baptism for? What does it do for us? And uh, of course, one of the things that we as Bible-believing Baptists hold to uh, is that the Bible is the final authority. Not tradition, not what what has been done, uh, not what people say should be done, not a cultural norm, if you will, but what does God's Word say about it? Uh, and that's how we should look at every area of our life. What does the Bible explicitly say about it? Uh, if the Bible doesn't word for word say something about it, uh, what's a principle the, the Bible teaches that we can live by? And um, so the question today is, one of the questions is, what does God's Word say about it? Well, let me start by saying that God's Word, the Bible, says that there is only one baptism. Um, Ephesians 4, 4 through 6, the Bible says this, There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, get this, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. See, God here says that there's only one baptism. You say, well, pastor, what are you talking about? The Bible talks about baptism of fire and spirit and water. You're right. We're going to get to that. Folks get this thing of baptism so messed up uh, because they think that every time that God mentions baptism, it's referring to water baptism, and that's not the case. Um, it, it's just not. There is one baptism, the baptism that you and I experience when we trust Christ as Savior. We are baptized with Him, with Christ, into the family of God. Romans 3, 6-8, the Bible says this, Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, we're baptized into his death. Is that talking about water? No, listen. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we also shall live with him. This is talking about our spiritual baptism in, into the family of God. Our spiritual baptism with Christ. Uh, Colossians 2, 11 through 13, the Bible says this, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Listen buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead, and you, being dead in your sins, and the circumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. You see, folks, when you and I trust Christ as Savior, we are baptized with the Holy Spirit in Christ. We are given the Holy Spirit as our comforter. We are baptized with Christ, uh, with his death, his burial, his resurrection. We're baptized into the gospel with Christ. That is the only baptism, the baptism in Christ, baptism into Christ, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Water baptism, all it does is it looks back to the baptism that we have spiritually in Christ. Uh, so when it comes to baptism, it's very important for us to understand that there's only one baptism. Uh, that helps us to understand what the Bible talks about uh, when it's referring to baptism. Um, you see, if you think that every time the Bible refers to the word baptism or baptize, uh, that it's talking about water baptism, you're going to get some really screwy doctrine. Um, in fact, I have here just a few misunderstood teachings about 
baptism. Um, some people, you look at Luke 3, 3, people don't understand that the Bible's not talking about water baptism every time it uses the word baptism. Um, people, people look at Luke 3, 3, the Bible says this, and he came into all the country about Jordan preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. What happens is people look at that and they say, oh, well, you need to be baptized to have your sins remitted. No, that's talking about you and I being baptized in Christ. You see, when we're baptized in Christ, we repent, we turn, not, not from our sin, but we turn from trusting ourselves and our religion and, and us to get us to heaven, and we're baptized in Christ. When you trusted Christ as Savior, you were baptized spiritually with Christ. Uh, here's another one. The Bible says this in uh, 1 Peter 3.21, The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, if you read that and you think that water baptism is the only baptism in the Bible, you're going to get from that to man... Baptism is what saves us, but that's not what the Bible's teaching here. We are baptized spiritually in Christ when we put our faith in Him. Uh, you see, you can get some pretty messed up doctrine if you think that it's all water baptism. God made it pretty clear. Uh, if you look at Romans, you look at Colossians, He made it pretty clear. Bible baptism is one baptism. Baptism into Christ of the Holy Spirit. Water baptism, for us, it just looks back to the baptism that we had spiritually in Christ. In John's day, it looked forward to the baptism uh, that that Christ would, would, the spiritual baptism that Christ would provide for us. That's why John, you remember, he said, I'm baptizing you with water, but there's one coming after me. He's going to baptize with fire and with spirit. What was he saying? This water baptism, it's just looking forward to the baptism that we're going to receive. Since we've trusted Christ as Savior, we're just looking forward to the baptism that we're going to receive in the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit had not yet been given to the believer. So get this, uh, just like John looked forward to it, you and I, our water baptism, when we follow the Lord in believer's baptism, that is looking back to the, to the inward baptism, the spiritual baptism that we have with Christ the day we trust him as Savior. How do we know this? Matthew 20, 22 through 23, the Bible says this, But Jesus answered him and said, Know ye not what ye ask? Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of, and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. And he saith unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. You see, folks, Jesus wasn't saying that, Hey, you can be baptized of John just like I was baptized of John. <clears throat> what he's saying here is you can, you can be baptized spiritually just like I'm going to be, just like I was baptized, you can be baptized with me uh, at salvation. That's what the baptism of repentance is. When you and I, we repent from trusting ourselves and our religion to trusting Christ, trusting his baptism. I know probably uh, there will be people that will say we aren't reading this right or that we're nitpicking scripture. And uh, so just for you, and uh, you know, if you folks go and you talk to people at work or you talk to uh, your religious friends that you have that you know they, they've been in church for a while and they, they've been taught erroneously, uh, there are going to be some people that challenge you on this. And I, I want to give you just a few things that can kind of help you to understand, kind of help to ground you in this, th this fact of the matter that baptism does not save. It does not help to save. It doesn't get us any closer to salvation. Salvation is something that's settled. Baptism is just a step of obedience. I have just two things that I want to show you. And uh, whenever I want to show to people that baptism does not help to save you from hell, uh, these are the two places I take them. Uh, let, let's look. Number one, let me say this. Jesus didn't baptize anyone. But he actually came to be baptized of John. Matthew 3, 14 through 16, the Bible says this. After this, these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea. And there he tarried with them and baptized. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. And comest thou to me? And Jesus answering unto him, uh, J Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. You see, Jesus here was, say it w was saying that he needed to be baptized of John. Now look, 
when John said, look, Jesus, I need to be baptized of you, he wasn't saying, Jesus, I want you to go ahead and dunk me in the Jordan River. What he was saying is, look, Jesus, I'm baptizing people with water. It's just looking forward to what you're going to do for us. You're going to baptize us with the Holy Spirit, with fire. That's what I need. I have need to be baptized of you. And Jesus said, no, suffer it to be so. In fact, if you look at the, you look at the earthly ministry of Jesus, so, so we know that baptism doesn't save. For one, Jesus was baptized by water. Jesus did not need saved. Secondly, you look at it, Jesus in his earthly ministry never baptized one person. His disciples baptized, but Jesus never personally baptized anyone. Don't you think if baptism was necessary for salvation, that the Savior of the world probably would have baptized people when he was here on earth? Let me show you secondly. The Apostle Paul didn't hardly baptize anybody. You know, there was a dispute. Um, there was a dispute in the city of Corinth over who, who was baptized by who, and people were kind of looking at it as a uh, kind of apostolic succession kind of thing. You know, like, well, this man, he's real spiritual, and he baptized me, and well, he baptized me. Listen to what the Apostle Paul said. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse 13. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in mine own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says here. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ, cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Here the Apostle Paul, he's saying, look, I only baptized a handful of you. But God didn't call me to baptize people. God called me to preach the gospel. The apostle Paul was the greatest soul winner, was the greatest missionary uh, other than Jesus Christ himself in the New Testament. Don't you think if baptism was necessary for salvation, that the apostle Paul would have said, yeah, I, I, I need to be baptizing people. No, he said, God called me to preach the gospel. That's how folks get saved, by, by receiving the gospel and trusting Christ as Savior. So we see the two the two best soul winners, the two most zealous soul winners in the New Testament didn't even really baptize people. Now, don't you think a baptism helped to save that probably they would have been interested in it? If baptism helped to save, they would have certainly been dunking people left and right. Water baptism does not help to save. It is just a picture. It's just a picture of the baptism you received in Christ when you trusted him as Savior. It's just something we do outwardly that associates us with Christ. And actually, if you look at the word baptize, it actually means to be buried, to, to dip, to immerse, to put under. What the Bible teaches is that, that baptism is baptism into Christ, which is what you and I call getting saved or, or trusting Christ as Savior. When you put your faith in Christ and you ask him to save you, you were spiritually baptized with Christ. So that is Bible baptism. That's what the Bible defines as baptism, baptism in Christ. So then we come to the second question. Why do we baptize and why do we do it the way that we do? You know, it's important for you and I as part of the local New Testament church. It's important for us to understand how the New Testament church handled baptism. To see that, we look to the to the New Testament churches. Many of them were in Acts and you, you can read about them in the the or the uh, you know, the epistles of Paul and others, but God over and over again in his word, he commands us to be baptized in water after we have been saved, after we've been baptized in his Holy Spirit, baptized in Christ. Acts 2.41, these are just some examples of the, the, uh, the early New Testament church, how they handled baptism. Watch this, Acts 2.41, then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Here we see that 3,000 people, they got baptized, but wait, they received God's word first. What happened? They got saved, and then they were baptized with water. Acts 8, 12 through uh, 13, but when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. What had happened here? These men and women, they trusted Christ. What does the Bible say? They, they believed the name of Jesus Christ. Then they were baptized. So they tr trusted Christ as Savior, and then they were baptized. Get this, Acts 8.35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. 
What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. What's he saying here? You can be baptized if you believe, if you put your faith in Christ. That is the only prerequisite for someone being baptized is putting their faith in Christ. Baptism has always been, Bible baptism has always been and will always be only for saved individuals. People who have first come to the saving knowledge of Christ as Savior, believed in Him, then we can be baptized. Get this. Um, <clears throat> Let, let's see Acts chapter number 10, verse number 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. So we see here these folks, they trusted Christ as Savior. They got filled with the Holy Spirit of God, and then they got baptized. So the, yeah, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is completely separate from water baptism. They trusted Christ as Savior. They were given the Holy Spirit to indwell them. Here the Bible says they were filled with the Holy Spirit. It means God was working. And then what happened? They got baptized. Right away, they got baptized. They preached salvation and then were baptized. They, they came to the saving knowledge of Christ and then these folks were baptized. Over and over and over again, uh, we see folks get saved. They get baptized into Christ. And then that very same day, as soon as possible, they were baptized with water. Baptism is an ordinance of the New Testament church. The Lord's Supper, uh, some folks call it communion, but the Lord's Supper, that's another ordinance of the church. What is it? It's just an outward symbol of something that happened within your heart. It's an outward symbol of something that happens within inside of a Christian. Baptism is just a picture, but it is an important picture. God commands you and I to be saved and baptized. Salvation associates us with the gospel of Christ. That's why the method of baptism is so important. You know, baptism, we already said, baptized literally means to bury. It means to immerse. That, that means to go all the way under the water. You understand that baptism is not a picture of salvation if it is not immersion. It's not a picture of salvation if it's not all the way under. In fact, as we study in weeks to come, uh, you know, as we study uh, church history and, and, and our Christian heritage, you'll see that this thing of, uh, of uh, infant baptism and sprinkling for baptism, uh, it, it wasn't even around until like 400 years after Christ walked the earth. I mean, this was way late in the game. What happened? They called it clinical baptism because there was some. There was a false church that believed that baptism helped to save, and they thought, well, hey, we've got some invalids that can't get to the church. We're gonna go. We're gonna find a way to take baptism with them. We're gonna pour it. Here's the problem with that: one, baptism does not save. We just saw that. Secondly, think about this: if you're just pouring water over someone, that doesn't even that doesn't even meet the definition of the word baptize. It means to bury. It means to immerse. And thirdly, it doesn't picture salvation. It doesn't picture the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's why, you know, we, we say when you're when you're baptized, it, it it's an outward picture. Let, let's suppose this is the water, and this is the individual being, being uh, baptized. They've trusted Christ as Savior. So what are they doing? They're giving an outward symbol of what has happened in their heart. The baptism with Christ. So this represents the death. It looks like a cross. Represents the death. When they go under, it represents the burial. And when they come back up, it represents the resurrection. So you see, we have the death, the burial, and the resurrection. The gospel represented right there in baptism by immersion. You don't have that with any other kind of baptism or sprinkling or pouring. You don't have that. So if baptism is, if baptism is a picture of, of the gospel, it's a picture of the baptism that we received in Christ, it's important that it actually represent what it's supposed to. It's important that it actually represent the gospel, which is the death, the burial, and the resurrection. That's important because without all three, you don't have salvation. Without all three, you don't have the gospel represented. And the method of baptism by, immer by immersion is important because baptism by immersion is the only baptism that represents the picture of salvation.
So we said, what is Bible baptism? There's only one baptism. It was when we put our faith in Christ as Savior, we're baptized in Christ. Now, water baptism is just a picture. And the reason that we do it by immersion is because it's a picture of the gospel. And any other type of, of baptism doesn't represent the gospel. It doesn't picture salvation. So what, what's the other question we have here today? What is baptism for? Who is it for? What does it do for us? Well, what purpose does it serve? Now, we kind of already hit that with the previous point. But let me say this. Number one, what baptism does for a Christian is it makes us obedient to God. You see, salvation makes us part of God's family. But once we're part of God's family, the first thing God wants us to do is be baptized. What does that do? That associates us with Christ. That associates us with our Savior. It associates us with the death, the burial, and the resurrection. You know, once a person gets saved... If we don't get baptized every day that we go unbaptized, we are living in disobedience to God's command. If you've put your faith in Christ as Savior, every day that you live without being baptized by immersion as a picture of salvation, you are living in disobedience to God. God wants you to do that. Um, so it makes us obedient to God. That's really the most important thing. Some people say, well, I don't know about it. Hey, the most important thing is that we be obedient to God if we're going to be Bible Christians. So that's the first thing that it does for, for the New Testament Christian. It makes us obedient to God. But let me say this secondly, and this is almost just as important, is it identifies us. Baptism identifies us. It identifies us a couple different ways. Baptism, for one, baptism by immersion, it identifies us with Christ. It identifies us with, hey, we believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. We, we hold to the death, the burial, and his resurrection as the finished work. And, and that's all we need to trust to be saved. It identifies us with the gospel. It identifies us with our Savior. And boy, that's so important. But let me say this secondly. It identifies us with the church that baptizes us. Did you know that Jesus did not need to be baptized? He was already the Savior. He, he was already going to live and die and be buried and be resurrected for us. Why did he get water baptism? We didn't need, we didn't need it. You see, Jesus walked 40 miles on foot to where John the Baptist was preaching to identify himself with the baptism that John was preaching. He walked 40 miles to identify himself with John the Baptist. He didn't travel, he didn't have to travel that far. He did it for a reason. And no, some people try to say that Baptist was John's last name. Baptist was not his last name. John the Baptist was a title given to him because of what he was preaching about salvation. He was preaching that, that when a person put their faith in the Messiah, they were baptized with him. They were baptized in his death, and they were raised to walk in newness of life like he has said time and time again in Romans and Colossians. So you see, John the Baptist was given that title because of what he believed about salvation and what he believed salvation was, that it was a spiritual baptism of sorts. That's what baptism by water represented, and that's why he was given that name, John the Baptist. He was given that name because of what he believed about salvation. And Jesus, he walked 40 miles to be associated with the guy. He said, that guy's got it right. And I want to associate my ministry and, and my, my work as the Messiah with what that guy's teaching about me because he's got it spot on. Then in Luke 7, 28, if you read it, Jesus actually says that there is no greater man born among women than John the Baptist. Hey, there's something about it, folks. If the Messiah says that guy's preaching the right way, I want to be associated with that guy. And then he says there's no one born among women greater than John the Baptist. Let me tell you something, folks. John the Baptist was preaching the right thing. And Jesus knew when he got baptized, hey, he didn't get he didn't get baptized by John the Pharisee or John the, the, the Judaizer. He got baptized by John the Baptist. He was teaching the right thing about salvation. And that's why Jesus got baptized there, was to associate himself with John the Baptist. You see, folks, John had it right. Jesus was identifying with him. He was called Baptist because of what he believed about salvation, being baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, I'm sure 
that some of the folks watching this video, and I'm sorry if I've been a little lengthy, I just, I want to be understood. I want you folks to understand what the Bible says about baptism. So many people, they have it messed up. They have it wrong. They've been taught erroneous doctrine. They've been taught tradition. But this is what the Bible says about baptism. Let me say this. I'm sure there are some folks watching this video asking themselves, do I need to be baptized? Well, here's what you have to ask yourself. Have you trusted Christ as your personal Savior? Has there been a time in your life that you prayed and you asked Jesus Christ to save you? You put your faith in his promise, his finished work on the cross. You're not trusting yourself or any good works or any dipping. You're trusting his gift. You're trusting him alone. If you have, then biblically, you, you ought to be baptized by immersion. Now, if you have not been baptized by immersion, by a Baptist church, you say, Pastor, why does it have to be a Baptist church? You know, folks, I think it's awfully interesting that John the Baptist, he was given that title because of what he preached. And now some 2,000 years later, oh, we've been given plenty of different names. We've been, we've been given Anabaptist, you know, rebaptizers. We've been given a bunch of different names, but we've come back to the name Baptist. Why? We believe the same thing that the John the Baptist believed about salvation. And, and I believe it's important that if you're going to be baptized, you associate, when you're baptized, you associate yourself with folks that believe right about salvation and about who God is. Not every church does that. Not every church believes that. So it's important that you be baptized by a church uh, that, that is a biblical church. Have you been baptized by a Baptist church, a, a Bible-believing church, by immersion since your salvation? Some may say, well, pastor, I've been sprinkled. Let me tell you, that's not baptism. That does not picture salvation. That does not uh, picture uh, our, our gospel. His gospel it does not picture that. Being sprinkled is not baptism. You say, Pastor, I've been sprinkled. You need to be baptized after your salvation by immersion, by a Bible-believing church. You say, uh, well, I was baptized by immersion in a Methodist church. You know Methodists used to persecute real Christians? Now, do you want to associate with them? That's who you're associating with. You, you say, well, well, Pastor, I was baptized at a, at a Lutheran church. Hey, let me tell you something, folks. Lutherans used to kill Christians. Do you want to associate with that? You say, well, I was baptized in, in this ecumenical church or in this, in this community church. Hey, let me tell you something, folks. If you were baptized in a church that they don't use the right Bible or they believe, like, like the Methodist church, that Sodomites should be pastors, hey, let me tell you something, folks. You're identifying with heresy. You're identifying yourself with apostasy. Is that what you want? I'm not trying to be offensive here, but this is what the Bible says. We ought to, baptism associates us. We ought to be associated with a biblical church. You say, well, pastor, I was baptized when I was a child before I got saved. According to the Bible, and you look through history at true Christianity, only those who have professed faith in Christ should be baptized. All through the New Testament, you will see only people who first believed were then baptized. Only people who first put their faith in Christ were then baptized. If you got baptized, let me say this, and, and, and I hope you know I'm not attacking anyone. I'm just saying this because it needs to be said. And so many people, they pussyfoot around the truth. I'm just trying to be honest with you, folks. I love you, and I want you to know the truth. It'd be awfully easy for me to not do these videos. It'd be awfully easy for me to not preach a lot of the things that I preach. But the Bible says that I'm accountable to preach the truth to you. And let me tell you something. If you got baptized before you were saved, you are not associating yourself with Christ or with the gospel. You are associating yourself with heresy. Because never was an unsaved person supposed to be baptized. That's heretical. That's apostasy. Do you know what pedobaptism is? Pedobaptism is infant baptism. It was started uh, by the Catholic Church. Do you understand? Uh, you know, the, the Catholics, they thought that uh, they, they thought baptism, man, it occurred so much in the Bible, it's got to have something to do with salvation. Because every time God, you know, many times when baptism is mentioned, God's saying, be saved and be baptized. So they, they got to think, well, man, it's got to have something to do with salvation. Do you know, they instituted pedobaptism in like, I, I want to say 380 I mean, it was years and years and years before anybody. And people who believe in infant baptism, they will tell you personally that the earliest recording they can find of it is about 380 A.D. That's a long time after Christ. That's a long time after true Christianity was already flourishing. What were they doing? They were leaning on their own understanding. They were leaning on what they thought was best. Let me tell you, if you got baptized as a young person before you put your faith in Christ, you need to be baptized again. If you want to be scripturally baptized, you need to be baptized again by a 
a Bible-believing church by immersion. Otherwise, it does not picture salvation, and it's not Bible baptism. We never, hey, you know, that's why a lot of Protestant churches, they still have infant baptism. Methodists, Lutherans, um, Episcopalians, Anglicans, all those folks, they still do baby baptisms. All when they'll say, well, this doesn't save, it just, it, it just gets the Lord's blessing. It does not. Baptizing a baby or sprinkling a baby, if you will, does not at all get the Lord's blessing on them. What it does is it falsely represents something. If, if you call it a baptism, it needs to be Bible baptism or it's not baptism. It's heresy. And I, I'm sorry if, if that offends you. I'm just trying to be honest with you folks. You know, we as Bible-believing Christians, we never came out of the Catholic Church. And we don't have any of those erroneous Catholic Church doctrines in our church, and I'm thankful for that. But do you understand that for thousands of years, you say, Pastor, why are you so wired up about this thing of baptism? Do you understand for thousands of years... True Christians were persecuted and even killed because of what they taught about baptism. You see, what would happen is the established church, whether it was Anglican or Episcopal or Catholic church, they would baptize everybody when they were babies. They, they, folks had to be baptized as children. Then as people would get older and they'd come to read the Bible themselves and they'd yoke up with a true Christian church, what would happen is they'd get saved and that church would say, hey, you were baptized into heresy. You were baptized into apostasy. You need to be scripturally baptized now. And so these folks, they would get re-baptized. And you know, it offended the establishment religion so much that they would actually seek those people out and kill them. You say, Pastor, you're, you're kidding. No, listen to me, folks. More blood has been spilled. The, the blood of more Christians has been spilled because of baptism than any other religion than any other doctrine, baptism is the reason more people were killed. Because people said that's not Bible baptism. And what happened? It offended those that were following tradition. It offended those that were following the cult cultural norms. Oh, well, well, grandma was baptized. I'm going to be baptized as a child. Well, my mom and my daddy, they were baptized as children. Well, my mom and daddy, they baptized me as a child. Are you trying to tell me that? Let me tell you something, folks. Bible's thicker than blood. We have to be willing to go to the point that we say, you know what? I don't care if I've been taught wrong. If the Bible teaches me something, I'm going to follow it. True Christianity has always held that baptism is only for those that have already professed faith in Christ. And if you were baptized before you professed faith in Christ, or you were baptized by some erroneous church, you need to be rebaptized in order to follow the Lord in what we call believer's baptism. Bible baptism. You say, well, pastor, this, this really doesn't make me feel good. And I'm sorry. I'm not trying to offend anybody. I wish I could just be positive all the time. But let me tell you something, folks. It's so important that we understand what Bible baptism is. Baptism has always been controversial because folks want to lean on the, their own understanding. They want to follow tradition. I want, and I believe you want, I hope you want, but I want to be a biblical Christian. I want our church to be a church full of biblical Christians. I don't want our church to be an erroneous church. I want our church to be a biblical church. And to do that, we need to be obedient to this thing of water baptism by immersion after salvation. I, I, I hope I haven't offended you. I just want you to understand what the Bible says about this thing of baptism. Let's pray. Lord, I, I come to you this morning. Heavenly Father, I, I wish I could have been uh, a little more kind. Lord, I, I wish that we could have uh, done this face-to-face -face and on an individual basis with people. But Lord, we've, we've some 12 or 13 or 14 people in our church that need to be baptized. And many people just don't understand it. And Lord, I want our folks to understand this. So many people have been misled. Lord, Thousands and millions have gone to hell because they're trusting this thing of baptism. Lord, I, I want people to understand it's just a picture, but it's a very important picture. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd work through this video. Lord, I pray that you'd work in the hearts of the people viewing this video. Heavenly Father, I, I pray that you would help us to receive this truth uh, well. Lord, it, it's what you've said. This is not... This is not preacher on here uh, giving his opinion. Lord, it's what your word says. 
Heavenly Father, I pray people would see that. And Lord, I do pray uh, that folks would uh, would study this out for themselves and they would come to see uh, that they that many need to be baptized scripturally. Heavenly Father, we sure do love you. In your name I pray. Amen. Now listen to me, folks. If you stuck with us through the whole video, let me encourage you. This Sunday, 11 West Edinburgh, we're going to be having our service. And uh, we are going to be doing baptisms. I, I believe we have three or four already lined up. Now, if, you, if you're, you need to be baptized and you're not scared to be baptized after somebody else, um, I encourage you to come this Sunday. We'll have robes for you. Uh, we'll, we'll have someone there to help, help you understand if this video hasn't uh, laid it out. We'll have someone there to kind of walk you through it. Um, but I, I do hope you come. I, I, I pray that you'll be there. We sure do love you. We'll see you on Sunday.